3D resin printers. Have you got one? I went out and bought one. Let's see how I got on. Hi everybody and welcome back to Sand Enchantment. As I said just now in the intro, I went out and bought a Anycubic Photon S 3D resin printer very, very recently. I felt that I would like to get one and dip my toe in the water of 3D printing because I felt that eventually it would be a very exciting prospect for bits and pieces on Sand Injunction. So I thought I'd give it a go. What I did is I wanted to film how I got it, how I set it all up, Anything that went wrong, I wanted to leave it in there and show you so that you don't make the same mistakes. But I wanted a chart from start to the end of my first print. So, there we go. Without further ado, let's see how I got on. Hi everybody and welcome back. What I wanted to do, and I've been waiting to do this for a couple of weeks, is go through all the business about this Any Photon or Any Cubic Photon S. Now, unlike the original one, the original one had a single z-axis bar this one has two and it's also unfortunately this has got a plastic case where the original one was a metal case and it does feel I mean it is well built but it does feel a little flimsy if got to say you know it wouldn't take much to snap the lugs here on the plastic you wouldn't damage this but you would more likely damage the lid if you were a little bit clumsy with it so other than that, it's it's fine. It's got a nice set of uh, the on-off switch and the USB are on the side. And also you've got the power to the back. The screen is small, but unlike the original one, uh, it has got much bigger lettering now. So it's a little easier to read. But it would again be nice had they considered making the display screen just that much bigger. Uh, it would be a lot easier. Anyway, let's lift that up. Let's have a look inside. Here we've got all the apparatus. The, the uh, vat and the build plate is here. This has to be set up, and we'll go through that in a moment. The first things are that you get an awful lot of kit when it comes. You get these uh, wrenches, which will operate different parts and undo for leveling. Not quite sure what that one's for. This one is the spatula that one takes off the print from the build plate later on. You get a service card. The service card is pretty good. It's done through online and you're, uh, you can read these and get straight through to them. You've got the normal health things like gloves and a mask and you have their guarantee. You have these are for pouring back excess resin from here to the bottle. And you get a user manual, which is quite comprehensive. And you also get a spare drum screen for here. I believe that's what that's for. But the first things first, you've got to get this thing set up. They do give you a bottle of their normal green resin, which is the smelly one. I will be using that to begin with, but I will then be going over to this, which is the Eco Resin, which is black in this case. You can get this in most different colours. The reason I got this is because it has less smell and it can wash away uh, all the uh, harmful bits of the resin in water, where this one you need quite a bit of um, the alcohol, the stuff that we use in our modeling to wash this and then of course you need to cure so this one is great but it is an eco it's a plant-based resin you stick this outside and the model or the print will disappear so this would be pretty useless to print with this if you're using any structures in your in a garden railway or something like that so you would have to stick to this one but this one's great if you're keeping everything inside uh, it will work very, very well. Okay, so enough of that. Let's crack on. I'm going to clear this lot out of the way and just concentrate on the unit. Okay, first things first. I had a couple of issues when I first got this one. The first thing is that you get a couple of wrenches. 
One of them, you need to go down in here to release the build plate to swivel it, to level it and flatten it off. The trouble with mine was that both of my wrenches were exactly the same size. And it should have been that they were different. This one is slightly bigger than this one and it works fine and that's the one I had to borrow from a friend now I contacted the company and within a week all the way from China I had a proper set of these uh, sent to me so their after sales is beyond reproach I've got to say they are very very helpful and they answer almost constantly if you send them a message within an hour or two you've got an answer back so I can't fault their after sales. They are as good as they claim to be. So with that said, I've got to take this off, take this out and check things. So I'm just going to raise this up by turning it on to the side. You can see it powering up. And let us go into the tools. And I want to move the Z bar. Okay, so hopefully you can see the screen. And I want what I want to do first is to raise the this up out the way. So I'm going to take it up. I'll get this to go. Did it the wrong way around. That's just taking it a little way up. And that's out of the way. Now what I can do now is release the vat. This is of course where you put your um, resin and you'll see this in a moment now inside here there is a very tight it's just like a very taut drum kit now they, it does have scratches and it's not a problem and to replace it you would have to replace take all this apart you have the tools for it but it is a little bit of something you don't want to do if you can help it I'll leave that on its side for a moment First thing when it comes, check that this photo screen under here is not cracked through transit. It is something that can happen and you do want to make sure that that doesn't or isn't cracked when you get it. So just take this out and check that. First thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to slacken off with the key the oh, and make sure that this is flopping around. doesn't need to go too far. It can be taken off and it doesn't have to remain in place. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a piece of ordinary paper in and I'm going to leave it just off to one side so I can see that edge. And I'm going to do now, okay, I'm just going to fold that up a little bit so it's a little more rigid. So I only want a thin piece of paper over the print, over this photographic screen. Now on here, I want to press the home button. I want to send this all the way down to the to the plate. So that's what's going to happen now. You see it bounce a little bit there. There we go. Okay, so now hopefully I can make sure first things first that this is square to that edge as close as I can. Okay, now I'm leveling this as well at the same time. I'm not quite sure if it is level or if it's not front to back and side to side. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten up the grub. So there's no more play in there. Now this is the crucial part because if you don't get this level, then you're not going to have a situation where you can print anything at all. I'll pull that out a little bit and hopefully you can see what's going on. Okay, so now lifting this up so you can see the dial and here. You've got up and down. You've got increments of 0.1 mil, 1 mil, 10 mil. Make sure you get the right one. I want to send it down until this will no longer move. I'm going to press the 1.1 uh, mil and send it down. It just went a little farther. Now I can, I should be able to push it, but I shouldn't be, I should, sorry, I should be able to pull it, but not push it. If it still pushes, it's still too high. So go back in on that one again and send it down one more bit. 
Now you can see it's pulling on here, but it's still very, very free over here. So I've got to slacken off the plate a little bit and just gently move that so it's still free. And I'm going to do that again. I'm going to come back in zero down. It's just very minute. Now it's still too tight on this side. Slacken off again. You don't want much. It's just the merest, merest little bits, but it's still moving around. So let's go back in one, down again. Still too much. I went down two. I am still too far up. we we'll get there in a minute. Yeah. Okay, so there. I'm going to go up one just to show you. And it's free again. We come down by point one. Press on the point one. Okay, so with a little bit of fiddling around and getting this about right, you've got it nice and straight down there, tighten it up. And hopefully one more put down. One more. And now I can pull it, but I can't push it back in. I'm just going to raise that up one more time. Put that in. We're square to there. Down one and I can't push it in, I think that that is going to be okay. Okay, so what we've got to do now, the paper's in, what we've got to do is press this little return arrow, and you press Z equals zero, and you press that, and you press enter, and that sets up this, so this will now come down to this level, and it will do that for every print. Okay, so the next thing we've got to do is we need to raise the Z. So we take the tray right out of it. So let us go uh, 10 and take it out the way. And take it again. And then take it all the way up out the way. So now we're level. This isn't going to move. We're pretty much set. And now it's time to put this plate back in okay now what you've got are two uh, inserts here that you can see so they go in place carefully as she goes in and they will stop and you can do this up putting it in place and it's set up now. Now the point is that you've got several options. You can pour this liquid over the top of this plate and pour it in. What you must make sure you do never do, and that is you must never ever get any of the resin on the outside dripping down onto the gap between. You will screw up the uh, photographic plate, you will screw everything up and it's not a cheap deal to put it right. So I'm gonna raise this up further Okay, so now I can pour in the resin. As I said just now, you do not want anything on the outside of this. Make sure that does not happen. What I've got to do is not fill it above a third. If you fill it too high, this will come down in and it will literally pour everything over the side and you'll have the most almighty mess. So be mindful, there is no mark as such, but be mindful to put enough in. And you must also make sure if you're on a long print that you can actually come back in and add to it should you need to if the vat is getting a little bit low. You don't want to lose a long print because there's not enough resin inside to do the job. So we are pretty much set to go now. Okay, so I had a second problem with this when I first got it. And that was that when they come, they come from the factory, of course, and they got their earlier firmware on. Now, what you must do is you must upgrade the firmware to the current spec firmware. Now, you go on the website of Anycubic, you download 
the up-to-date firmware for your machine, whether you've got the Anycubic Photon, whether you've got the S. Now that said, it was easier said than done for me because I was taking mine off of a clean drive. The, the little USB that they give you is recommended pretty much not to use it. It's not a very good one. So use a very clean, and when I say clean, a USB that has got nothing on it. Now I did just that. And the problem I had is it would not see the firmware. I downloaded it, I unzipped it, put it on the hard on that little USB stick, stuck it in the side, nothing happened. It would not see it. I was getting really irate with this whole thing. I realized at the end of the day that I was working on a Mac and my Macintosh USB was set for Mac OS journaled, which most of mine are. But what you must do is make sure that you've, if you, especially if you're working on a Mac, is that your USB stick is not only is it clean, but reformat it to uh, the MS DOS, and that will then see this will then see the um, firmware update and also the workspace update, which gives you the tools and the slicing software that you need to. Uh, add your things into here and make them all work properly. Okay, now you've got print, system and tools. When you put your USB stick in to redesignate or upgrade the firmware, what you do is you treat it like a print. So you put the stick in, you go to print and it will show you what is currently on that stick. There's nothing there at the moment, there's no stick involved but it would show you the two firmware updates as prints and you run them as prints and it will then upgrade itself and do what it's necessary and needed to do. That's all you simply do. Let's come back out of there. Okay everybody, and I'm ready to go. I have got the 3D printing resin all in the back ready to go. It's only up there is a very small chamfer mark on the side and that is a rule of thumb. If you don't really put it over that then you should have no problems at all what you don't want is to have it so full that when this plate goes in that it pushes the stuff over here it will wreck so many things and it can wreck this if it comes over the side too so this is all down we're ready to go the usb stick is in and it's all turned on and you can see hopefully here the um messages and we're going to go to print so I'm going to go and turn the lid down so that we close the box and this is all from the UV okay so what I've got now is one set of stillage um, pallets so I'm going to press go for that and hopefully it will go print go there we are now I'm going to press go and you'll see the plate I come in now is disappearing down into the vat. It's immersing itself in all of the fluid below there. And you can see now, but you can see everything here is um, set to go. And what's happening is that it's going through the initial phase where it's putting a thickness onto the build plate. So the whole thing holds there and then it will start and you can start to see what is happening. It's now gone through one layer. Now this whole process will take a couple of hours so what I propose to do is to come back. You don't want to sit and watch this go up and down make its noises for two hours. I have got a little bit of scent or of whiff but not serious enough to put me off. The smell is not off-putting. It's not a great deal and uh, I understand that if you use this plant-based version, it's even less. But certainly I am in my train room at the moment with this and I have the door and windows open in fairness, so it is well ventilated. Just make sure if you get anywhere near the resin that you wash your hands or keep them covered in a cloth and then wash them and it shouldn't be too many problems. But Okay, so what I've got here is a very old painting box of mine that I no longer use. It was a hand-built one that I made many, many years ago, and it's been superseded. But what I've got to do is have a setup where I can use UV light to cure my printing model, which is over here. 
and when it comes out the model will be pushed off of the build plate with a spatula it will then be washed in one vat of isopropanol and then once it's had a little wash in there it will go into the next one which is a fresher bath and I will wash the remaining resin off in there and once that's done it will then need to go either into full sunshine depending what time of day it is of course or into a box now many people use a very small nail uh, one of these nail boxes that people put their hands in and uh, just hardens off the enamel from a nail bar but I have decided to use this old box I'm going to glue in this silver foil I'm not going to make it permanent because of course I might make a version 2 which will be better than this this is an initial one and here of course are some UV lights now these are a certain type and I can't remember off the top but I will put in the description uh, so that you can see what type of UVs they are but I'm just going to put them all everywhere all over the place and it will plug into a USB mains um, feed and it will just harden off my model at the appropriate time. Okay everybody and welcome back. Now this is as I say it's happily printing away and um, I wanted to just touch base on a couple of little things. Now the print is stillage and uh, the, you know the stillage crates on the railway and the model for that or the program or the file for that was given to me by a good friend James Wareham. Now James has been down today very kindly and he knows I've had an awful lot of problems with getting this unit to work and all the way through I thought that we had issues with the machine itself. Now in fairness to any cubic I have been on to their tech people in China through emails toing and throwing for the last couple of weeks or so trying to get to the bottom of why this will not print something and as you can see it is now printing something and the thing is that it was less to do with this and more to do with a the program description i.e. the files they had the wrong uh, underscores in them once that had been eliminated then this unit was able to see the files that it needed to print. Now that I thought would have been the end of the problems and just press go but no it was more than that. What happened was was I was using a USB stick that wasn't up for it. Now you can put in up to a 16 gigabyte USB so I went off and I looked for uh, China sort of said about an 8 gigabyte one so I went around looking for one I found one on Amazon and I didn't muck about with it I just put in the new folder or the new files put it in here and all that did was manage to let this see it but it would not operate it and it turns out that the USB stick is a little bit not that good so you do need to shop around and get yourself a fairly decent not a knockoff and there are so many knockoffs out there purporting to be the real thing so you do have to be a little bit careful and it's worth spending a little bit more on a decent one but not above 16 gigabyte when James come down he had his stick with him which was a good one and this had the same file on it and this machine saw it straight away no problems and off it went so a good USB really is quite essential okay everybody welcome back the print was done overnight and it is finished and you can see the build plate has gone right up to the top there because if you had a long one on here of course it needs to clear the vat so it go, travels all the way to the top when it's finished and you can see there the first row of stillage crates that are ready to extract and take from here now this is where you need gloves and ideally you should have a mask on too so I will do that and then come back now the first things first is you're going to need some paper towel and quite a bit of it so I'm going to put quite a bit down here just to catch any drips of the um, resin so that's that ready to go and the other thing you need to do is have a couple of small vats ready 
to put some isopropanol alcohol in two ideally one that you can put a first wash in and then a second wash and rinse and i can pour some isopropanol into each of these okay that's that job done so now we've got our iso ready and here is our plate so let us just lift the thing up and let us just confirm and now we can return we can go to print but we go to tools and one thing we can do if we wish to we can move the z-axis down if we want to 10 mil downwards let's just take this off slide the bill plate off now you can see the stittage plates as they've been produced so I'm going to put that there for a moment I'm going to close this off because the less natural light that gets in here through uh, without the protection of these uh, filters you will start curing your resin in the vat that you don't need to do luckily you're provided with one of these spatulas and ideally all you should be doing is literally sticking this underneath and letting it slide off like so there's the bill plate there's that let us carefully <laughs> i've realized that my my pots are not going to be big enough i didn't look at that did i never mind take unslide these carefully and pour the contents into a longer vat like so that will do the job okay now we can take our resin and we can slosh this around in here there we go we can wash all the excess of our um, resin off in this you can see how the color of the iso is uh, changing because we are washing out all these stillage plates and all that excess that's been sitting on there now this printed over the course of the late evening in the early hours so it's been happily sitting there all morning until I've had chance to get to it but you can see here now how green that that water has become I put that against that paper towel you can see how green that is and that is full of the residue of this second wash in here just to make sure that you're not got anything from there this too will turn a little green but obviously I hope not as much nice little wash in there and while I'm doing that I'm going to get another piece of towel like so and just wipe off our build plate give it a good clean and I want to clean over the top here this has had a lot of stuff on it and it pretty much goes but you do just need to make sure that everything is clean so there we are anyway i just take that off of there a little rub on the paper on a flat surface and that's pretty much good to go right put that to one side a bit more paper towel just to make sure that anything on my gloves has not been left on the top of the build plate apparatus that would be pretty good so I can now lift this up and do that and put that back in place and we're good to go for another print should we wish to do so I would top up the vat okay you can just about see if I point to it that little ridge line in there there's a little chamfer a little ridge line and that's really where you should be ideally filling to and no more now you can see I filled this yesterday before I started this print to that line and it is a millimeter two millimeters not even that I don't think lower so it's printed these stillage crates nicely and it doesn't use a great deal of uh, resin to do the job so let's close this up for now okay so we're cleared up and we're ready to go now i'm going to drain this off now I'll just pick this up and you can see on here that you've got a thicker side and a thinner side now the stillage 
uh, crates seem to be absolutely fine and you can see all the mounts all the little piles under there that supports they are the built-in supports when you create the program but this here would suggest that the build plate is still not quite level and if you can see that and it can cause a problem in this case it hasn't caused a problem but had it been any more off it quite possibly could have caused a problem along here but there we are they're perfectly formed they look great so I'm going to drain those off for the moment and again you can see even now there is still a discoloration to the second vat. I might just leave it in there for a little while longer. Get rid of this one and let's get set up to do the UV. Okay so I'm just going to open this up. I plugged it in. It's on a little USB. All I did last night was just use some uh, very simple um, glues and I've put the UV in there in the strip and all I'm going to do now is to drain this off just drip that away I'm going to put it in there like so and I will turn it over in a little while so simply there we are and there we got the UV on and I'm just going to shut that down and give that a few minutes curing. If I've missed anything out, I do apologize. Somebody will tell me in the comments, but I, first time I've ever done it. So I uh, hopefully that by my mistakes, uh, if, and those that I've made, and there are one or two, then I, I'm sure you'll get it right, you're in. But you know, I think it's a great way to have a lot of fun with your uh, modeling. Uh, they're not too expensive and providing you take care of health and safety yourself then I don't think there's a great deal of problem with it and the nice thing is that you can actually create little bits and pieces for your layout even if you don't design them yourself many people are putting files STL files out there that you can actually create something in your printer without even doing all that side of the work but if you have the ability to uh, form something in a, in a program that's a 3D program, then fantastic. I've still got to learn that process. But when I do, then I can sort of take something that I've seen that is really particular to Sandling J, uh, Junction as a whole, and I can hopefully create it and then print it and add it to my layout. And that's the fun of it. This is really for me to try and print things that I can't buy ready to go. Okay this had about 10 minutes and I can smell the aromas but uh, it should be nicely cured off now ready to go. I think that's nice and hard. You can see here where it attached to the bill plate but here it didn't just in a couple of places. Now I don't know how important that is or is not but I will do some more investigation. As I said this is my very very first print and it's a good one. Uh, I've got to say, uh, it, it looks good. There are 12, 18 stillage crates here that will, once they've been taken off and cleaned up and sprayed, they will look the part. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there and uh, put this in the sunshine, turn this all off. I don't need that any longer. So I hope you've got some insight into printing 3D uh, with a resin printer, certainly. And it's giving you some idea and these can be obtained fairly easily actually I mean there are several different versions this happens to be the S and if you look on eBay any cubic themselves periodically put out I think every week every two weeks they put out several auctions with these so that you can actually bid and I got this approximately a hundred pounds less them going onto their website and buying something brand spanking new. This is indeed brand spanking new. No, it just happens to be that it was in an auction and I got it at a good price because of the auction. So it's well worth looking on eBay and checking. Anyway, in the meantime, thank you very much to all my subscribers, especially all the new ones that have come back on uh, recently. And that's fantastic. Thank you for joining the channel and give it support as well as all my existing subscribers. And if you are watching this and you're not a subscriber and you like the content that I provide from Sanding Junction, then please, please, please hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon, and at the same time, 
like it, comment it, share it with your friends. It's all good and it all helps. So I thank you very much and I catch you all in the very next video. No idea what it's going to be yet, but there you go. That's the fun of modeling. Take care. Catch you all soon. Bye-bye.